Hey, this is OXDF. And today we are looking at a challenge that's part of the coder box from Hack the Box. Um, and specifically in this challenge, we have a uh, encryptor program that is an EXE, but it's a uh, .NET executable, so we can open it up and basically get the source out of it. And uh, we also have a file encrypted by it, and we know the timestamp of the file, so we can get the uh, we can we can under, we can get the seed value used to generate random values, and so we can actually decrypt the thing. Um, but we just need to take this encryption program, this .NET program, and rewrite it to be a decryption program. So we could try to redo this whole thing in Python, but like I've already got it in C sharp, so let's just do it in C sharp. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, we're gonna jump in here. Um, I'm gonna use .peak. I've moved over to .peak since um, DN Spy is not really being updated anymore, and I like .peak. Um, there's one thing it, you don't, well, we'll get into it, uh, but in general, I like it quite a bit. Um, so we'll come here and we'll grab the encryptor and drag it in. And now we can pull this up. Um, here we go. Uh, oops, didn't mean to open that. Let's close you. And we can see over here in the namespace, you've got this AES um, bit. And uh, we've got the main function here. And uh, this really is just one big function. So but I guess there's two functions here. Um, so args is going to take in a file to encrypt. It's going to take this. And it's going to change get the uh, change the extension to .enc. Uh, it's going to generate a random uh, a new random thing using the Unix time seconds of now. So it's going to create a 32-bit integer uh, of Unix timestamp. It's going to use that to seed random, and then it's going to generate a random um, IV and uh, key, and it's going to pass those to encrypt file where it's going to encrypt the file, um, and it eventually does write it down here at the bottom. It's going to write it out to the buffer to the file. So um, we want to re we want to modify this. Um, in DN spy, one thing that's really nice is you could actually just modify within it. Um, it's, in some ways, it's actually cleaner though here. What you have to do from .NET peak is you're going to do export to project. And uh, we're going to pop this up. Let's see, we can do, um, let's give it a file, a, a folder name. We'll call it like uh, slash coder. And we will export if that works. Yes, it does. We can close this. Um, we come over here to the coder folder, into the encryptor folder, and open up this uh, SLN file, which is the project file for Visual Studio. And uh, it's going to take just a second here, but it's going to open up. And uh, we will have this code basically pulled right back into Visual Studio in a way that we can edit it, modify it, et cetera, however we need to. Um, let's see. Here we go. Let's open this up. So here's our the same code. In fact, the first thing I want to do when I get it in here is I'm just going to go ahead and hit the uh, hollow error here to start with start it and run it. You can see right now it says you must provide a file name to encrypt. So we have run the program up to here, and we've got this, you know, from the if. That's why we're only getting that. Um, so the program does run from via Visual Studio, which is nice. Um, so we don't need any of this uh, arg stuff. I mean, in theory, we could uh, still make this a variable that we pass in, but we we are going to just hard kind of hard code this. So that's good. Um, we're gonna come here and let's see. So we don't need file info equals R0. Let's just do like string uh, src file equals, and then I'm going to, I know my my source file is in hack the box coder, and then the IP is it 207, I believe. And we have s.blade.enc is the encrypted file. So we'll have that. And we will do string desk file equals and we will write out to that exact same path. Um, we could do all the stuff to again like make it look the same but again it's you know why we could, for something like this where we have a one-time use there's no point in making it super generic. Um, why is that? I wonder why it's all I guess it's supposed to be that far in. Let's see so we don't need you anymore. Uh, we don't need a desk file anymore. We do need the random uh, but the random is gonna be different right so what we need to do now is actually make the date time. And if we do this, let's see what the date time mod time equals new date time. And we can just do the time this was created. So it's 11, 11, 17, 17, 08. Um, and I just have this in some notes. Um, if you want to see the details of exactly how I found that, um, it'll be in the blog post. I'll include a link to that in the description here of the video. Um, and then we can say int seed. And so as we're looking for an integer here, uh, is equal to, we can say uh, new date time offset. Um, and just like we did here is date time offset new. Uh, 
on mod time. So we need to convert that to a daytime offset. And then we can do two unix time seconds. There we go. Like that. And then we have this whole, oops, let's see. Then we have this whole thing uh, there. We are going to want to, that's actually not going to come back as an integer. We're going to want to convert that to an integer. So we're just going to do an int right here. And that will give us the seed as an integer. And then, let's see. Perfect. Okay. So now we can get rid of this whole thing. Just pass in seed right there. So now we've taken our random and we've seeded it to the timestamp from the file when it was encrypted. So now we basically know what the seed was going to be there. And that means when we go to generate these random numbers, uh, they're just going to look, they're going to look exactly like they did when the thing was encrypted. So now we can just come down here and say uh, source file and dest file. Why does that not work? Let's see, dest file is just a string. But I didn't, let's, let's do, yeah, we'll, we'll just do, oops, let's see, we'll leave this as it was and we'll just add the T here and that should work. Um, so now we've got the files all set up how we want. We've, we should be generating the same IV and key that we generate that was generated there. Um, to make this like look nice, we'll do decrypt file. We can change this to decrypt here. Uh, so now we're going to take in a source file, desk file, a key, and IV. We are going to generate a new Rindel manage. That's the AES engine. Uh, we're going to get the file stream to create for the output file. We are going to get make an encryptor. We'll call this decryptor. And it's useful here to, to rewrite these because it makes sure you check each line. So we're going to do create decryptor. Um, so now we, we make sure we get down here and make sure this all makes sense. We're still going to use the key and IV. That's all good. We're going to get a crypto stream off of this with the file stream uh, for the desk file. We're going to pass in decryptor. And the, crypt, the road mode is right. Uh, this all looks fine, fine, fine. We're just going to do that. And I think we might be done. So let's... Um, give it a run see what happens uh it ran and nothing happened so maybe that's good if we go in here and we can do a z colon hack the box coder and uh i guess we need a i guess we need a quick way to check here we'll jump back over here into uh, a linux vm and cd hack the box coder uh, and if we run file on s.blade, we have a 7-zip archive. We can see that also with s.blade uh, SSD. Oops, let's, see. let's put that in the head. And we can see it starts off with... Uh... Oh, that's not what I expected. Let's try this again. Uh, into head. There we go. That makes more sense. It starts off with the 7z, which is how 7z files start. So that, that's looking pretty good. So we have managed to do it. So let's just review real quick what we did. Um, we started in .net, or .peak. We found, we uh, sent that over to a Visual Studio project. Uh, and then we were just able to change. So we changed how we pass data in, just sort of hard coding it. Uh, we hard coded the timestamp to the current, the timestamp that was on this s.blade.encrypt file. Uh, and then we switched the decrypt file encrypt file function to a decrypt file function, but basically just changing this name um, and then the decryptor from an encryptor to a decryptor. Um, that's it. Actually pretty easy. Um, so I'm going to call it here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I will talk to you next time. Bye.